I cannot explain how excited I am for the upcoming In Pursuit of Soul 2 film, and all of it is thanks to Doug Fish. I had the pleasure to chat with the Indie Pass owner last week and discuss this project along with many other things, including cow tipping. Yeah, we went there. Such a great conversation and I don't want to spoil too much, so without further ado, let's jump right into it. The man that started this whole process is with me today, Doug Fish. And uh, if you don't know that name, you really should. He started the Indie Pass a few years ago with just a handful of resorts and now has grown this to be over a hundred resorts and absolutely just owns the Midwest market, which we will talk about in just a minute. Uh, but Doug Fish, thank you so much for chatting with me. I'm so excited about this film, which we're going to dive into a little bit more, but thank you for being here. Oh, thank you, Matthew. It's great to chat with you as always. I want to just start before we dive into all of that. I mean, where did your love for this industry and just skiing in general, where did that start? Get, paint that picture for me. Yeah, well, I, I uh, caught ski fever when I was seven years old on Mount Hood. Uh, that's to this day, it's my home mountain. I live in Portland, Oregon. Two, two neighbor kids, uh, they were, you know, twin boys and, and they were my best pals and, and their family skied. They had a cabin and they took me up the mountain and I, I got hooked. Nobody in my family ever skied. And, you know, I just got hooked on the sport. I, I'd take the bus up by myself, you know, and I was in middle school. And as soon as I could drive, I learned how to drive in the snow. And, you know, I've been going ever since. I just, it's my thing. I love it. So, you know, this, you were the first one in your family to like really get into skiing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, and it just, you know, kind of happened by, uh, you know, they took me up and I gave it a try. And that was it. You know, I, they bought me a pair of, black stretch pants with purple racing stripes and that was all it took <laughs> <laughs> I, I have an image of that and i think i think yeah. still pull it off today well this was 1963 okay yeah. you know, the fashions were a little different then <laughs> and so was the equipment believe me so flash forward several years uh i think it was what 2019 was when the indie pass mm -hmm. was was first started uh, tell me what mm -hmm. was your driving motivation to start this product or did i mean how did this all begin yeah, so the Indy Pass actually, uh, we started conceiving the Indy Pass in January of 2018. And that was uh, when Altera was formed and they announced the formation of the Icon Pass. Uh, when that happened, we saw uh, an opportunity and a, a gap in the market for independent resorts. You know, Vail and Altera were going to roll up all the big guys and uh they were going to leave a you know the max pass was dissolving and that was going to leave a lot of mid-sized resorts on the sidelines and uh so we started thinking wow maybe there's an opportunity here and you know about 20 months later we launched the indie pass a little bit of a side question here i mean have, did you ever think it would be as big as it is today with now over 100 resorts i mean you're spread out across the world at this point you got mm -hmm. all over the place and it just seems like nothing's in your way right now it's uh, it's still a, a struggle and a grind i mean yes we we've grown it it significantly and it's been great i knew it would work i just i knew in my heart that that this project was was going to work i you know i quit my day job and spent two years uh of my life to get it off the ground and and uh yeah we're at 121 resorts we're going to be announcing 11 more i think three or four in the midwest it, it's been a fun ride it's been it's been the uh, absolute uh, greatest uh uh, thing I've done in my career. Uh, a lot of these passes that we've seen have, have really neglected the Midwest market. And one thing I noticed from the very beginning, you have always had a pretty big presence in the Midwest, you know, starting with mm -hmm. a handful of resorts and it's grown. Was that always part of the business model or did that just kind of happen organically through your business? It was absolutely part of the business model. Um, we knew it would be, be big in the Midwest and in New England where there's so many resorts and so much competition and, and so many independent resorts, you know, mm -hmm. and Vail and Altera are focused on the big, you know, destination resorts. And, you know, there's certainly uh, some of those in the Midwest, but it's really dominated by, you know, the mom and pops and the, you know, the hardworking uh, community resorts that we really, um, you know, that we really embrace. Yeah. And I've seen such a shift um, just in the last five years, we went from having resorts that people in the Midwest that would, you know, maybe buy a season pass to go to a handful of times a year, then mostly do their skiing out West or out East. Mm -hmm. I've seen a big mm -hmm. shift um, with products like yours where now, 
you have the consumer instead of taking their trips out west or out east, their their road trip in the Midwest, which is so cool to see. And I think your product yeah. leads into that perfectly. Yeah, and and the one thing I've come to realize is people in the Midwest aren't afraid of driving, you know, a few hours to get their their turns in. Yeah, we we're we're seeing it too. That I think there's a, a renaissance back to these smaller community hills um, for a variety of reasons, you know, expense and. Uh, access and and you know skiing's become very popular and and you know the most popular places are are getting crowded on the uh, on the peak days. You know I think that Midwesterners uh, still like to head out west. You know uh, you know there's there's no comparison to the train in the west. You know the Rockies are the Rockies and oh come on and, come on three hundred yeah. vertical let's go. Like. <laughs> no I I think I think three hundred vertical is is awesome and you can have a lot of fun on three hundred vertical. <laughs> Uh, but you know, if you want three thousand vertical, you're going to have to take a drive or get on a plane. And you know, we see a lot of that. A lot of our pass holders in the Midwest and the East um, head out west. We we track every single usage of the pass. We we can you know we know where they started and where they ended up, and it's be definitely being used as a as a travel pass in that regard. So before you you started this whole project, did you ever ski in the Midwest or even know there was skiing in the Midwest before you started the Indy Pass? Well, I knew there was skiing. I, I knew that, you know, the Midwest was just packed with, with resorts. I was blown away when I learned that, you know, Wisconsin and, and uh, Michigan have, you know, is more than most any other states. Uh, but no, I had never skied uh, east of the Rockies okay. until I started this pro this pass. And uh, my first trip out there, uh, I'll never forget. I, I I was on the hill, and it was like six degrees. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> it was so cold. I lasted two runs. I I couldn't believe it. I thought, oh, six degrees. That's not bad. It was a different six degrees than I'm used to, man. It was something. You people are hardy. <laughs> But after a couple of days, I got kind of acclimated and, and actually got some fresh, fresh powder on that trip at Big Powder Horn up in the UP. And and uh, I hit about five resorts and, and just had a blast, you know, talking with people, skiing the hills, uh, doing laps, you know, doing Midwest laps. It was very fun. It, it, I mean, that leads me to my next question. So what surprised you the most about this region and these ski areas compared to obviously the West Coast and, and your East Coast resorts? You know, just just the terrain, really, and um, I, I think that um, people ski differently in the Midwest. You know, m most everything is groomed, and so uh, I, I noticed a lot of people. You know, have beautiful technique, and out west, it's just more freestyle. Let's call it. You know, I know I noticed the equipment is different too. You know, I showed up with my hundred underfoot uh, whatever all mountain skis and. Uh, they were just, you know, way too wide for, for mm -hmm. what I was trying to do. And so those are the differences. But, I, the, you know, the passion and uh, the love of the sport is no different in, you know, Wisconsin than it is in Wyoming or Colorado or Utah. The Indy Pass now has 26 or 27, depending on how you look at that, if you count Snow River as two full partnered resorts and one ally resort across the Midwest. These additions mean that you are roughly – own 24% of the Midwest market. That's just crazy to think about. So yeah. the question now becomes, is there room for additional growth or are you kind of starting to reach the, the limit of what you can do in the Midwest? You know, that's a great question. And we keep, you know, learning more about the Indy Pass every year. Uh, but we are we are still growing in the Midwest. We're adding resorts. We added several this year. We just added four more in Illinois, Ontario. West, Western Ontario, Wisconsin, and Iowa. We're going to have 100% of the, we, we now have 100% of the resorts in Iowa. <laughs> we got all, all three. three. All three, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the coolest thing. You know, we've con we've conquered the 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 Hawkeye state and now it's on to the rest. You know, uh, Matthew with our allied resort program, uh, the way it's structured, we can literally add every single resort in the country if if they want to be a part of the indie revolution we call it mm -hmm. uh we can we can we can do that now so you see that as the as the the bridging the gap between that bringing in um uh resorts as allied partners instead of full partners. yeah 
Yeah, I mean, we obviously we we can't have you know ten resorts uh, within a day drive of your house for uh, two hundred and seventy nine bucks. It, it, we, nobody would buy a season pass if we did that. So we do have to be you know geographically spread out to a certain extent. But the Allied program is different. It's just your Indy Pass becomes a, a discount card, essentially. You can ski these allied resorts for up to 50% off, and it doesn't affect the yield uh, that we pay out to our partner resorts. 85% of all of our uh, revenue goes back to our resorts based on redemptions. Each visit, it, we call the yield. You know, if we get too many too many visits on the pass, then uh, the yield goes down and, and the, the model stops working. But uh, no, we, you know, we're, we're at them as fast as we can. And, and cross country is another uh, category that we opened up this year. I know cross country and Nordic are, are huge in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to be adding more of those uh, resorts. And, uh, you know, I don't think there's any limit to the number of uh, those particular properties that we could add. So let's let's talk about this film because I'm so excited <laughs> about this. Uh, the first in Pursuit of Soul was a massive success. I, I think everybody was buzzing about it when it came out last year. But I will say my one critique was it didn't feature a single Midwestern hill. And I actually called you out like back. This is like last year. Was that by design? Like, were you thinking about this all along, or is that just kind of na- how it naturally developed that year? You know, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. It was kind of a production budget, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> We, we could spend X amount of dollars to produce that film. And we knew we, we, we had six resorts in the West that wanted to participate. And I figured, okay, if we can get some in the East, that's two, two trips for the, for the crew. You know, they could do a loop around the West, a loop around New England. And there just wasn't, we wanted to add uh, the Midwest, but there wasn't a budget to make a stop in the, you know, in the middle of the country, unfortunately. So I thought, okay, no problem. That's what we'll do next year. We'll spend our whole time in the Midwest and we'll do a film about skiing in the Midwest. Why do you think the first movie was so successful? I think it, it brought out a lot of uh, emotions about small resorts. Everybody remembers their, you know, their first girlfriend, their first beer and their first ski resort. Right. <laughs> and it's about those kind of resorts, you know, and no one had ever done a film like that. There's been, thousands of films done about you know all the the storied resorts in north america and all the great skiers who ski them and you know all the great cliffs they go off of and on and on and on but nobody's taken the time to do a a film about these indie resorts because they didn't think it was commercially viable and Mm -hmm. you know we provided the funding that's why the film was made and it turned out to be a big success people really enjoyed watching it and and it it, i think it really tells the story of what it's like to run a a small ski resort it's you know it's it's a really cool thing that these people do that 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 run these 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 hills yeah it was such a different take on your standard fall ski movie and i think so many people were late i know i personally did uh while watching it it just felt like it just hit this deeper level of like why mm-hmm. we really love this sport as much as we do. And, and also like yeah. just shed some light on how hard all these people work, especially these mom and pops to make sure that we can be on snow each and every year. So, so this second movie, this one that will be coming out this fall in pursuit of soul Two, covers the Midwest market, which historically has been basically often overlooked by the skiing media. What was your inspiration for this film? Why did you think that the Midwest would make a, successful ski movie and why did you pursue that market specifically well the reasons i mentioned before i think that uh, the story needs to be told people in in the midwest are no less passionate about skiing than they are anywhere in the world and um you know nobody's ever covered that this film is probably not going to you know be the number one film in in denver or you know, Vancouver, BC this year, that's okay. You know, I, I hope everyone in the Midwest uh, takes a chance to watch it though and, and appreciates what they have in the Midwest because um, it's it's an incredible thing that you guys have up there uh, with all these resorts and all this passion for the sport. And, 
you know, I just think it, that story needed to be told. How do you feel that this film differentiates itself from the first one and then others in the market that are being released this fall as well? Well, I think, you know, the, the Midwest is unlike any other ski market, that's for sure. And I, I think that the shots and the interviews and uh, the skiing that is featured in the film are, are unique, very specifically to the Midwest. Uh, you, you, you could not, you know say you could not take those shots and say oh this is just like skiing everywhere else in the world no 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 this is this is what it's like in the midwest and you won't find it anywhere else and and uh that that's what i like most about it I, and i think uh people up there are very proud of their their skiing heritage and their their snowboarding heritage and that's what comes across in the film i think it's definitely, I, I've had the opportunity to see it a few times now. Um, and I, I love that it is not pretending to be something it's not, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. very real to itself and no, there's not going to be massive cliff drops and all this other stuff, but kind of mm -hmm. like what you were saying, it's very authentic. It feels very real and you can kind of feel the passion as you watch the, uh, watch the film. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, Matthew, I have to say that, you know, you were a big part of this film as well. You know, you provided a lot of the the local uh, insider knowledge, and and you know, the crew isn't from the Midwest. I'm not from the Midwest, but you know, you you were kind of our our man on the street, so to speak, that really helped us capture the essence of of Midwest skiing. And you know, your part participation was critical to to the success and outcome of the the final film. Thank you. I think the coolest thing for me was uh, showing the film crew who's never been to the Midwest and have only skied, you know, out West Jackson Hole is their home base and watching yeah. them interact with what a difference the, the ski culture is. I mean, it's all the same, right? We're all the same passionate people, but when you boil it down to it's like very basic form, it's just so, uh, I think they're just absolutely astounded by how much passion there is here for how yeah. little we have and it was pretty cool to walk them through that and see their reactions to the different hills and kind of experiences uh -huh. it was really fun yeah that's great no you, you did a great job of educating those guys <laughs> those jackson <laughs> hole boys <laughs> as you watch obviously you've, you've seen the movie probably a couple times by now is there a, a moment or a scene or a segment that really stuck out to you that when you're watching this film a couple of things I really like, uh, you know, the the icons of the Midwest that are included in the film. You know, the the the, the references to cheese are just priceless. <laughs> I think all the cheese, the cheese statues and the cheese places. I mean, it's just so so cool, so Americana. And then you know, uh, one of the owners, uh, Rick Schmitz, he said, "Hey, you know." our yo-yo is just a little bit shorter. Our, our string is just a little bit shorter on our yo-yo, but everything else is the same here. And I thought that that was a great way to, a great analogy to sum up skiing in the Midwest. <laughs> there was a, I will say there was a lot of cheese consumed. I think it was a 16 day shoot and uh, yeah. there was no lack of cheese consumption during that, that time period. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, I, as it should be cheese and beer, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Obviously, those in the Midwest are pretty amped up about this film. Uh, I've been getting questions almost on a daily basis about when it's coming out, the details. Uh -huh. um, but what would you say to somebody that skis out west or out east? Why should they watch this film and why might they be interested in, in this type of movie? I think that, um, you know, this this movie, like like its predecessor, covers the soul of skiing and um anyone who's who's really into skiing and and especially anyone who's into the business of skiing needs to you know they, they will relate to this film because they just will it's it's the authenticity of these resorts is just um what it's all about i think and I also feel it's kind of strange that everybody from the West, or not everybody, but a good portion of them are from the Midwest. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you ever noticed that. You start talking to people in Colorado and like half of them are oh, yeah. transplants, you know, somewhere. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, it, you can catch the fever in the Midwest just as easily as you can in Utah or Colorado. There's no question. And uh, if you catch it bad enough, you know, you'll probably head West. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so obviously this is the second iteration of this film. Uh, do you see that? Is this something that you're going to continue on a yearly basis um, from the production mm -hmm. side? Or like, what is your long-term goal uh, with this you know, series? Possibly. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, we, we fund the film. Uh, the resorts also kick in some funding. So um, if we can continue to, to do that and TGR is willing, um, you know, I think they're one of the finest uh, uh, film companies in the world. And, and if they want to keep doing this and, and we can, find the uh the resorts that want to support it and participate absolutely we'll you know we'll keep ipos in pursuit of soul going for as long as we can i love it i can't i can't wait to uh see what the future holds on that front i think it's a great it's a great more realistic film series that i'm just i really enjoy a lot and i think a lot of people do as well before we kind of start to wrap things up here is there anything else that you'd like to add about the indie pass or the upcoming film uh, that we didn't touch on already yeah well i'll just put in a plug for our world premiere we are partnering with buck hill which uh, you yeah, as you know matthew is 10 minutes from downtown minneapolis and we're gonna we're gonna have the world premiere there and we hope everyone will come out and check it out the tickets are free uh, we're also going to show the the new TGR uh, you know annual film called Magic Hour, which is a great a great film, and uh, you know we're going to drink some beers and celebrate the upcoming season. I'm so excited! I will definitely be there. Uh, can't wait for that event, and it's just going to be a great vibe to kick off what is going to be, I think, another phenomenal season. So can't wait for that one. Amen. So guys Amen. Out there. Yeah. <laughs> Now, before I let you go, I always like to, to leave with a little bit of fun. Uh, so uh -huh. we're going to do a quick rapid fire questions. Uh, fair warning. Some of these might be a little strange, but I want you to okay. answer as quickly and truthfully as you can. So we'll start uh -huh. with the first one. What is the ideal ski width for the Midwest? Oh, uh, if they made a 50, that would probably be it. <laughs> <laughs> ice skates is the answer. Right? Yeah, ice skates, <laughs> right. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, how many runs do you have to take before you can hit the ski bar? Oh boy, I go by feet. You know, ten thousand vertical, and I'm I'm probably uh, just about ready for a beer. There are people in the Midwest. Th this happens. You put the ski boots out of the parking lot, and you walk straight uh, up to the bar. Uh -huh. <laughs> and <you go> ski. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you just take one run home <laughs> that's yeah. it all right so i need you to finish this sentence happy cows come from happy farmers <laughs> <laughs> wisconsin is the correct answer oh sorry <laughs> well <laughs> uh, yeah you can tell i'm showing my west coast roots <laughs> If you had to describe a Midwestern skier or snowboarder in one word, what would it be? Oh, I did that already. They're, they are the hardiest <laughs> skiers I've ever met. <laughs> I could agree with that one. I could definitely agree with that one. Doug, have you ever been cow tipping? I have never been cow tipping. I know what it is and I've heard of it. We just don't have cows where I come from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I would have if I would have been. If, yeah, if you were in cows. Wisconsin <laughs> I, I in would, your younger days, maybe. Yeah, I would have been a cow tipper, I'm sure. Well, I guess I'll, I'll first start. Do you know what a Midwestern goodbye is? Uh, no, I okay. can't say that I do. So a Midwestern goodbye is we are so nice sometimes that when we try to say goodbye, it takes like a very long time because the conversation <laughs> kind of continues as you like go right. out the door. Yeah. So in your experience, you've obviously talked with some some Midwesterners in your days now. How how long is the average Midwest goodbye? It's definitely longer than the average uh, goodbye in other places. And, and, you know, I think my wife must be from the Midwest because usually I'm standing out in the uh, parking lot for <laughs> 20 minutes waiting for her to finish her goodbyes. So, uh, you know, she's got some Midwesterner in her somewhere. <laughs> that's right deer hunting or walleye fishing well matthew my name is doug fish <laughs> <laughs> so deer hunting <laughs> i know i'm a, I'll, I'll go with the walleyes do you call it a casserole or a hot dish i'm a casserole guy that's a minnesota thing i don't hear it very much outside of that water fountain or bubbler in the portland area 
uh, we have a uh, uh, a couple hundred of these <clears throat> water fountains called the Benson Bubblers. Oh. And they were they were put in uh, back in the 1800s when the town was full of loggers, right? And this guy named Benson, he was the, he was a rich uh, logging magnet. He, he couldn't get his uh, logs, uh, you know, cut because his guys were always drunk. They were always in the bar. And they'd tell him, well, we're thirsty. So he put in like 200 of these fountains, and they run all the time. You don't have to turn them on. And they call them the Benson Bubblers. And it was to keep the guys, you know, quench their thirst at least long enough for them to do their job. <laughs> So I have to go with bubblers because uh, you know it's part of the Portland Portland thing. You guys, you guys just got a little history lesson right here from Doug Fish. That's amazing. I'm impressed. Uh, I need to go check these out now. Jeez. Yeah, they're nice. They're brass. You know, they you know they look they're beautiful. You know, Benson bubblers. The Benson bubblers. Nice. I like that. And finally, what would you say to someone that says there is no real skiing in the Midwest? No, they're crazy. You know, they're missing the point. <laughs> Amen. If you can't have fun here, you can't have fun anywhere. That's what I tell people. Yeah. You know, yeah, for sure. Well, Doug Fish, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, for those looking to catch this film, the trailer, which I'm super excited about, uh, is going to launch on Tuesday, October 18th. The world premiere online is going to be a week later on Tuesday, the 25th. And as Doug already mentioned, we're going to have a world premiere locally here in the Twin Cities area on Saturday, uh, October 22nd. I'm super excited for that. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we will drop some links below to all of those once they go live. So if you want to check those out. Uh, and then, of course, those are all going to be streaming on TGR's website as well as on YouTube. So we'll link that stuff once it does become available. But, Doug, thanks again for taking the time. Thank you for doing this project. I love this. I'm so excited. I can't wait for all of my viewers to be able to, to finally see this and share it with their friends and family. And it's just exciting to see our little local hills on the big screen. It's great. Yeah, yeah it's going to be fun. All right. Thank you, Matthew. Of course. Anytime. Take care. All right. If you want to check out the film, I'll be sure to drop a link below once it premieres, and I hope to see all of you at the world premiere on October 22nd at Buck Hill. But until next time, I hope all of you have a great week, pray for snow, and I'll see you guys out there.